Hey guys, in this lesson we will talk about analogous organ, vestigial organ and atavism from the topic evolution. This is presented by me Yogita Khandelwal. Analogous organ. So uh, this is an evidence of evolution from morphology and anatomy and we have already dealt with the first ev evidence of evolution from morphology and anatomy that is homologous organ and this is another one that is analogous organ. So organs which are different in origin but similar in function are known as analogous organs. So they have different ancestry, their structures are different but they are performing similar functions and called analogous organs. So uh, Analogy, we don't have any uh, common ancestry, but they are showing evolution. Now, ev evidence for convergent evolution. So, analogous organs are evidence for convergent evolution. The origin of different groups of animals with similar functional adaptation is called as convergent evolution. So, the uh, when different groups of animals is having similar functional adaptation, then that is known as convergent evolution. And in other words, when more than one adaptive radiation appeared to have occurred in an isolated geographical area that is representing different habitats, it leads to convergent evolution. So, when more than one adaptive radiation occurs in different habitats, then it leads to convergent evolution. Examples of analogous organ, wings of butterfly and wing of birds. Butterflies invertebrate and birds are vertebrates but they have uh, wings that are showing similar function that is for flying and but their structures are different so that's why these are analogous organs similarly pectoral fin of shark and flipper of whale eye of octopus and eye of vertebrate now uh, these eyes differ in their retinal position in the structure but they have the same function thus the analogous organs Flipper of penguin and flipper of dolphin. Sweet potato, it is a root modification. In potato, it is a stem modification. And both have similar function that is storage of food. So, this is an example of analogous organ from plants. So, in analogous organs, from comparing these animals or organisms, we can say that they have similar hab habitats that leads to uh, for uh, same adaptive feature and that same adaptive feature uh, leads towards the same feature thus these analogous organs are due to presence of same habitat that leads to same adapt adaptive feature in these organisms parallel evolution so convergent evolution in closely related animals is called parallel evolution for example, evolution of single-toed horse and pair-toed deer for fast running. So, uh, single-toed and pair-toed in horse and deer are adapted for fast running. So, these uh, they have cursorial adaptation and convergent evolution between marsupials and placental mammals. So, since these are closely related animals and convergent evolution in the, them are called as parallel evolution. Now see these are placental mammals uh, on divergent evolution because of adaptive radiation we have mole, anteater, mouse, lemur, flying squirrel, bobcat and wolf. Similarly Australian marsupials or mammals going to divergent evolution because of adaptive radiation we have marsupial mole, numbat, anteater, marsupial mouse, spotted cuscus, flying phalanges, Tasmanian uh, tiger cat and Tasmanian wolf. Now See, we have one adaptive radiation here and one adaptive radiation in Australian mammals and these have different habitats. So, when more than one adaptive radiation is occurring in isolated geographical area or different habitats, then it leads to convergent evolution. It is the best example for explaining this. So, we have convergent evolution between placental mammals and Australian mammals, mole to marsupial mole, anteater to numbat or anteater. Mouse, mouse, marsupial mouse, lemur, spotted cuscus, flying squirrel, flying phalanger, 
बॉबकैट तास्मानियन टाइगर कैट वुल्फ एंड तास्मानियन वुल्फ सो डाइवर्जेंट इवोल्यूशन और अडेप्टिव रेडिएशन इन डिफरेंट हैबिटेट्स लीड्स टू कन्वर्जेंट इवोल्यूशन नाउ वेस्टिजियल ऑर्गन दिस इज एन अनादर एविडेंस फॉर इवोल्यूशन ऑर्गन्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन रिड्यूस्ड फॉर्म एंड आर नॉन फंक्शनल बट करस्पॉन्ड टू द फुली डेवलप्ड फंक्शनल ऑर्गन्स इन देयर एंसेस्टर्स एंड रिलेटेड एनिमल्स सो ऑर्गन्स विच आर रिड्यूस्ड एंड नॉन फंक्शनल बट देर वर बट दे आर फंक्शनल एंड फुली डेवलप्ड इन देयर एंसेस्टर्स सो सच ऑर्गन्स आर कॉल्ड एज वेस्टिजियल ऑर्गन नाउ दिस इज एविडेंस फॉर डाइवर्जेंट इवोल्यूशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल wings of flightless birds like ostrich emu kiwi etc now these wings since these are flightless birds so these wings are non functional but they are functional in their ancestors and other birds so this is a vesti wings are vestigial organ for these flightless birds similarly eyes of deep sea fishes human vestigial organ humans have more than 100 of vestigial organ and some of these important from your exam point of view are body hair and third molar that is wisdom tooth canine teeth and coccyx auricular muscles ear pinna muscles uh, other organisms can move their ear pinna muscles but it is a vestigial organ in us cecum and vermiform appendix nipples in male plica seminalis that is nictitating membrane and panniculus carnosus that is subcutaneous muscle remember these vestigial organ it important atavism appearance of ancestral traits in present generation so uh, ancestral traits which are lost during development appear in some of the individuals of present generation then it is referred to as atavism it is also an evidence for divergent evolution for example human baby with tail we don't have tail but our ancestor had tail so if a uh, human baby develop with tail it is known as atavism large canine now this represent our ancestry with carnivorous organisms presence of thick body hair in newborn baby uh, and it represent our ancestry to apes presence of multiple nipples in mammary gland so that's all for this lesson thanks for watching